Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Job Nimbus 101 workshop for the week. We're so happy to have you on board. Today, we'll be concluding our duology about managing your team's access in Job Nimbus. Last time, we talked all about access profiles, ways to restrict access or give access to make sure everyone has exactly what they need to do their job and to keep yourself secure. Today, we'll be expanding on that with some more impressive ways to both restrict and grant access to your team to make sure everyone's doing the best job they can. My name's Logan. And I'm Dan. And as Logan said, we are going to be talking about giving your specific team members more access and also restricting some of those accesses to other team members. Now, what this does is this will help create natural milestones in your job process by helping team members know that, hey, this job needs to be looked over before it's moved into per se job approved. It'll also help give your a specific team members who have limited access a bit more accesses when they're a team lead. So if you don't want a team lead to have full access to your account, they can have limited access, but be able to view what their team needs and what they need to see on their team. So let's get into it. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about groups. Groups, like Dan discussed, is the ability to give a limited access user more access to see things that their team members might be in charge of. So if you remember from last week, we discussed full access, which is being able to see all the contacts, jobs, and tasks in job members, versus limited access, being able to only see contacts, jobs, and tasks that you're assigned to. Groups fall somewhere in the middle. Now, if we're gonna turn on groups, the first thing we have to do is we have to come into our settings like we are now. Remember, you'll click on your picture or initials in the upper right and choose settings. Once you're in there, we're gonna to come to the features tab and we turn on groups. We'll know it's on when it's blue as opposed to gray, like this job scheduling. Once you've turned on groups, the group tab will appear right under team. Let's go ahead and click on that. You can see that we already have a group set up. We're gonna add two more groups today as examples of what you might do with the groups function. The first group is gonna be our sales team. We're gonna set a manager for the sales team. We're gonna say that's Harry. The members of this team are gonna be Harry, Emily, and Sergio. This way, Harry will be able to see not only his own tasks and contacts, but all the tasks, contacts, and jobs of Emily and Sergio. Now, another way we might use a team is a little bit more collaborative and less hierarchical. So we're gonna add another group, and this is gonna be our production group. Our production group will actually wanna see all of the contacts, jobs, and tasks that are assigned to the different people inside the group. So we're going to choose three people again, this is going to be Byron, Aaron, and Michelle. And we're going to set them all as both managers and team members. This way, even though these managers might have limited access, all of them are able to see all of each other's contacts, jobs, and tasks. Now, these are really powerful in a few different places. Of course, one place is on our calendar. For example, Harry would be able to see all the tasks assigned to his group on the calendar. And in our production group, everyone would be able to see each other's tasks on the calendar. That way we can plan more effectively for how we're doing our production and Harry can plan how his sales guys are doing and make sure they've got a good workload. There's two other places that we can make use of groups to set specific access. One is in our reports. If we look at one of our reports, I'm just gonna edit an existing one. You will see this available to section. We can set this to specific groups and say, hey, we want the production group to be able to see this. Then each of those three people would be able to see it. Another place that we can edit access is in our boards. For example, it's possible that we'd have a sales board that we only want a sales team to see. So we could go set this to specific groups and set it so that only the sales team would see this board. 
This can be useful if we're setting boards in very particular ways or if we're separating the boards for different teams in a large organization. Now that we've talked about giving certain team members more access, let's talk about restricting some access. And that is done with advanced workflows. Now, like groups, advanced workflows is not immediately enabled. So to enable that feature, go to your settings, Open your features tab and toggle advanced workflows on. Now, as we can read, this feature disallows specific team members from being able to move a contact or job into protected statuses. What this means is that when we use this feature, we can give specific statuses an access profile, and that will protect that status from other team members moving a contact or job into it. Now, I've already talked about the job approved status. So in this instance, it'll make sure that a specific person on your team or a specific role in your team will need to verify that everything is done for that contact or job before it is moved into job approved. Let's see this in action. When we go to con our contact workflows, we can go in and edit a workflow and you'll see that there is a new column available for access profiles. Now, all of these statuses right here from lead to sign contract are all, are, are, are all available to all profiles. That means that anybody can move any contact into any of these statuses. We can see that permits and materials ordered are owned by the manager and the admin. So only a person with the manager or admin access profile are able to move a contact into the materials ordered or permits statuses. Now I want to restrict job approved. So I can come in here, edit this status, delete the all profiles and make sure that my office manager has access to that status. We'll save it. We'll close our workflow and let's go to our board to take a look at this. Our job approved status is in the production board. So we open that. We see here we have our signed contracts and I wanna move Gary Kilgore into job approved as Charles Schnell. Now Charles Schnell does not have office manager permissions. So when I try to move Gary Kilgore into there, see that this status is not applicable to Charles Schnell because I do not have permission to put this card into this status. This right here can really help create those natural milestones so specific managers get a chance to look over your jobs to make sure everything is in line before moving forward. We really hope that using access permissions, groups, and advanced workflows will help you create those natural permissions for your team members so that you can work effectively in Jobnibus. We thank you all for joining us today, and we hope to see you again soon.